Good morning everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda. So today is the 28th of January 2021 and um, there's, a, there's some interesting thoughts that's going through my head and I'm receiving some interesting downloads um, and I had an interesting dream last night so I thought I'd put it all together on this video and we'll just see where it goes. Okay, we'll see what uh, teaching wants to come through. Um, we're going to be talking about ancestors and we're going to be talking about multidimensionality and we obviously are still under the influence of the Leo full moon. Um, I'm recording this at 10.10, 10, near enough, nearly 10 past 10 in the morning. I think it's full around about 7 o'clock tonight in the UK. Um, but you know, whenever you watch this, it's really just noting that this is being made under the influence of this Leo full moon, which feels um, very powerful. I've already done a video on Leo full moon, so you've probably already watched that. If you haven't seen it, go back and have a look if you're interested. But um, what is striking me is that this seems to be so multi-layered, this particular um, time and this particular gateway, um, that is this full moon. And I hadn't been tuning in that much to the ancestral energy around it, but it came to me very clearly last night. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, so what led me to come on this morning and talk to you is that I have noticed that pretty much any of the powerful portals actually <laughs> seems to be, um, often just before you go through them, there is the potentiality, doesn't mean it has to happen, but there is the potentiality to have a little bit of a wobble for your shadow side to appear in all its mighty glory and try and derail the process. I've noticed this now a couple of times that the energy is building and building and building. We're nearly there. And then right at the 11th hour, um, a shadow energy comes in and tries to sort of, uh, well, basically lower your frequency. And it's quite dispiriting when it happens and quite frustrating when it happens. But the one thing I do know is that we should never push away our feelings um, we should always honour where we are at at any particular time or any particular place. Because if you don't do that, to be honest, it's it's just being false, isn't it? So last night, went to bed and uh, it's the day before the, or the evening before the full moon. And all of a sudden, just this low mood came over me. Um, pretty much from nowhere. And I was like, oh, what the hell is this about? You know, um, I just to be honest, wanted to go to sleep. But I suddenly felt there was a lot of shadow energy coming up linked into, um, well, being perfectly honest, the energy of having been used and abused in the past, okay? So quite a victim-y type energy, which I never like to stay in too long at all because it's the one archetype energy that we all have that I really try very hard not to hold. And when I notice it coming up in myself, it's like, no, 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 you're not getting a grip. OK, I'm not staying in this frequency. So but anyway, yeah, it was just this energy of having felt used a lot by people in the past. And I was like, OK, that's really interesting. Where's this coming from? But I was really feeling it and it was affecting me. So before I went to bed, I put out what I call one of my SOS calls. I've done this many times before and I'll do it again. You probably do the same when you're feeling a little bit low. And it's basically just a call out to Soul Tribe for reinforcement energy. That's basically what it is. So drifting off to sleep, also clutching my new crystal, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, which is Lemurian Seed Quartz, which also might have had something to do with it. I sent out an SOS call to Soul Tribe and I just said, come on, help me out, guys, here. Um, help me lift this energy. I don't want to feel like this tomorrow morning. Whatever this is, please just take this away. Allow the healing to happen. Drifted off to sleep. And to my surprise, um, yes, Soul Tribe did come in. But this is the interesting thing. Um, it wasn't 
how I expected it to happen and it wasn't who I expected to see. And there was learning in that because I don't know about you, but sometimes when I put a call out and like to Soul Tribe, and this is ex this is external Soul Tribe, they're not people that are in my street or town. I'm talking about out there, okay? That I, I guess there has been this perception in my head that I'm calling out to my galactic brothers and sisters, because I have a very strong galactic energy myself, as well as angelic. I know the angels are around me all the time, but it's like I always, in my head, I suppose, I'm thinking I'm calling in a galactic um, soul tribe member. <clears throat> so my surprise was the person that turned up so clearly and actually visited me last night was my grandfather. So it was an ancestor. It wasn't a, well, this is the thing. It sort of was a galactic shaman. <laughs> I just hadn't fully appreciated that I, the ancestors also absolutely hold this. And I just want to bring it up for discussion in our community before I tell you what the dream was about, because I think, again, Metatron always teaches me that everything is part of everything else. And so to try to break down these barriers that we place the whole time. And it's because we're human beings that we do this. So interestingly, this week, I'm um, trying to finish, although it's going to take another couple of weeks, this colour therapy course that I've been promising for a couple of years. And I'm really into it. I'm writing it. It's doing really well. I was speaking to one of my friends yesterday, Clara Apollo, who interviews me occasionally. I go on her show and she said, she, because I've known her for years, she said, oh, you are putting the stuff in that you did years ago about colour therapy and Reiki, aren't you? I'd totally forgotten that I used to even teach that, how you can incorporate colour into Reiki just as much as you can into Metatron healing, angelic healing, anything, breaking down the barriers. Um, and I was like, oh God, no, I've totally forgotten that. So I'm rummaging through old files, trying to find, you know, what I wrote years ago to incorporate now. I've done the same with um, trying to uh, embrace the shamanic worlds and the angelic worlds, that it's not never the twain shall meet. Um, looking at some of the work that I've done politically over the last couple of years, it's very much been about trying to find the middle path, left and right, what the violet pill teaching as well. So, um, yeah, this thing about suddenly the ancestor turning up when I'm expecting some sort of, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was expecting a galactic brother and sister, even if I didn't see them, to feel them, to just know that they were around, the reinforcements were here. So what I get is my cuddly granddad, okay, who passed over years ago. Um, I have found this photograph of me and him um, from years back. I'm not going to put it really close because it's actually not a particularly great photograph of either of us <laughs> because I'm blowing out a birthday cake and he's sort of like, oh, <laughs> because he loved cake. So his eyes are really big looking at the cake. He's also looking at me with just this expression of just real love, but he's just watching the process. And I love this photograph because it's reminding me that in many ways, this is what our ancestors are doing. They're still watching us. They're still watching the process. They're with us when we're blowing out the birthday cake candles. As much as when we are feeling a little bit down, a little bit deflated, and they're trying to pick us up. So, um, but yes, also honouring the fact that, and I think this is so important, that our, why do we just think... It's like this is the human ego that we all have, which is that, and it's because in spiritual communities and myself as well, we talk about the fact that we're on this brink of this big new change, which we are. We are arriving into new earth energy. We are harnessing all of these other multidimensional aspects of ourself, okay? Um, you know, the DNA is being upgraded. Our light bodies are changing, etc. And so I think there's almost like this uh, wrong perception that we look back at the ancestors, okay? This is my card showing ancestors from my own deck. We look back at this, this line of ancestors and it's like not appreciating that they had all of that within them as well. They just never got to show it or demonstrate it um, in the lives that they lived, lived because of the times in which they lived. Um, not just because of, um, well, yes, because of the vibration of the earth, but also because of circumstance. You know, if you're an, you've got an ancestor and they were fighting World War II or World War I, 
they were fighting World War Two and World War One. You know, they didn't have as much time to maybe, you know, be integrating and processing energies and doing the healing. They were, you know, this was real survival mode. So I think, one, we need to acknowledge that our ancestors also have all of this heritage, galactic heritage, angelic heritage. Of course they do. But equally, the more that we step into it and own it, the more that it gives permission for them to as well. So he didn't quite come in in a space suit last night, but I sort of, there's a bit of a, you know, he had a bit of, he always had a bit of a twinkle in his eye. There's this sort of twinkle in his eye in, so, in terms of sort of, yeah, well, you know, uh, I, I'm sort of quite into this as well, you know? And he's the last person I would have expected to have said that. So I just love all of that. The other thing I got shown by, with the ancestors this morning was, again, the Lemurian um, seed crystal quartz, which arrived in my home yesterday. I, I treated myself to this. One of the things that Lemurian quartz is known for is that it has this um, ladder effect in, in it. OK, so it's got like a ladder um, formation. And when I meditated on it, I was shown it as a ladder of light. So the ladder of light obviously links into our upward journey in terms of evolution and ascension. All portals, whether they be full moons, new moons, um, numerological gateways, solstices, eclipses, whatever they are, um, they're all offering us, offering us, you don't have to, the opportunity to climb another rung on the ladder. Um, and everybody has their own ladder is what I'm being told as well. OK, so your ladder doesn't look the same as my ladder as the next person's because we're all meant to be learning different things on each rung. OK, um, but what was so beautiful linked into the ancestors was I was shown that it's them that are actually holding the bottom of the ladder. OK, um, very much like if you were going to climb up and, I don't know, clean some windows and you're, you know, you're climbing the ladder and it's all a bit precarious and is it safe, you know, is it a windy day, are you going to fall off and often you've got the person at the bottom, haven't you, and they're just like, it's okay, I've got you, you know, you can go up and you're looking down, it's like, you're sure you've got it and it's like, yes, I'm sure I've got it and that's what I saw today that our ancestors are also doing, that they are holding the base of the ladder um, to allow us to climb up, which helps us to elevate in consciousness, but equally we're doing it for them as well. Um, so I thought that was worth sharing. Um, I will tell you now the dream itself, which was it's only a very short little dream really, um, but it was so beautiful guys. It was so beautiful because after putting out this SOS call, which did come quite from a deep place in my heart of feeling a bit used, abused and, um, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, there, there he appears. We're standing outside a church. It's quite interesting. It was a church as well. It was an old fashioned, I don't know what century, 12th century church. You see them in the UK, very beautiful church. And they often have a porch outside the main body of the church. He and I were standing in the porch of the church whilst there was a service going on inside. A lot of the people that were inside were people I know, um, including a few people that I have um, uh, stuff to still heal with in this lifetime. So they were there in the church, you know, doing whatever you do, you know, hymns and stuff were going on. But me and my grandfather were standing in the porch outside of it and um, he just held me. He just held me. It was just a dream about being hugged. It was being hugged and being held. It was being held by somebody who truly loves you, who truly is your soul tribe. And I can't tell you how beautiful it was. And I think many of us are living through um, months, and let's hope it's not years, but it is going into a second year, where a lot of people haven't been held for a long time, not truly held. I'm talking about truly being held by somebody that really loves you. And when you feel it again, it's just, it almost like takes your breath away. And yeah, he just held me. And it because I knew the dream was also not just a dream, it was a visitation. 
I could feel uh, I could feel the warmth of his body basically. I, it was that real. He he was absolutely there, and he just held me out in this porch of this church, and I was crying. And in my dream, it was like this is the last time I'm ever going to see you, which is why I was upset. And I think it was healing a lot of um, stuff from um, when he died, which I hadn't processed, which I didn't even realise I hadn't processed. But it was also to do with, um, it was just to do with comfort. There was something else there about the dream. It wasn't just about letting go of grief. Can't remember what it was now. It'll come back if it's important. But yeah, this thing are just about being acknowledged and being held. And and then we went back into the church and well, I can't remember, then I woke up. So I had to share that with you because I just feel with this, energy that we've got here um we're not being asked to do it alone and even if you do feel alone it's as though there are so many unseen forces and energies with all of us that we don't truly acknowledge and recognize a lot of the time and one of them absolutely is our ancestors um i've also written this down again i was just tuning into this lemurian quartz Okay, which is a teacher crystal. And I'm just going to read these words. I might try and put this on a little, um, you know, picture post as well. Um, it's what I heard was this was scale new heights, reach higher octaves. Your notes will only be truly heard by those with antennas developed enough to receive them. And it's fewer. It's not what the crowd listen to who are drowning out their unprocessed shadows. And I'm like, whoa. And the analogy I was given was I was shown a dog. And you know dogs can hear tones that other people can't hear. Um, Bella's always like racing out into the garden because she's heard something and it's like, no, there's nothing going on. But there is actually. It's just I can't necessarily hear it. So... Um, that 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 is the metaphor it's like the we are animals at the end of the day we don't like to think we are animals sometimes but we are we're animals there's nothing we have to claim that as well you see we have to claim that's part of our multi-dimensionality just as much as the galactic energy and the angelic energy we also are animal okay so the animal part of us it's as though um we are we are scaling new heights we are reaching higher octaves and your notes and what they mean by that is your voice your message is only going to be able to be heard by people that have got antennas that are developed enough to even be able to receive you let alone understand you receive you okay so this again you know one of the things that came out in my um, longer full moon video on YouTube was the importance of being with Soul Tribe at the moment. This week, that was one of the messages that came through, but it's not just this week. It was almost like a feeling of just be a bit selfish for a little bit. You need to be with your Soul Tribe. Okay, so what I'm really talking about in this video is A, your Soul Tribe includes many beings that you're not necessarily fully acknowledging one being ancestors i'm not saying all of you are but you know i'm guilty of that sometimes they are absolutely there and they're particularly there when you really need them to be there okay that it's not a case of just clicking your fingers and they're there necessarily i mean my granddad he's come to me a few times in my life and it's usually been times when i've needed him to come okay let's put it that way um and it makes it more special, though. It makes it so much more special when they do come. It's the same with when you summon spirit. You can't summon spirit. You know, spirit doesn't come to a bark, is what I'm hearing. OK, spirit comes from a sweet melody from the soul and the heart, which is linked into respect and admiration. And it's also to do with um, thy will rather than my will. OK. You know, my will, which is I need to hear what Metatron has to say right now. Metatron's just going to back into that corner. That's my ego. When it's about thy will be done, OK, if you have a message for me, I am ready and open to receive it. Thank you very much. But if you don't, that's equally OK. That carries a completely different vibration. And it's the same when we request our ancestors to be with us. 
you know, or any any beings. Uh, I just think it's important that the tone is the right tone that we bring out. And, and that also doesn't mean that if you request their assistance in times of real desperation, um, that's not heard. That is heard. Metatron's saying that is a different line. How interesting is that? He's showing me that it's almost like there's a there's a switchboard. There's a switchboard and uh, there's a special line that is reserved for calls which are desperate, okay? And desperation has a particular tone. And des uh, and I'm talking about true desperation. This isn't the person that maybe plays wolf the whole time, you know? Uh, is that the right expression? Little boy who cries wolf the whole time. It's not that. This is the genuine cry when spirit truly knows this time you need some help. And then the help comes. The visitation comes, the message comes whatever okay um it's interesting that i'm talking about this today leo full moon because everything is quite exaggerated i think there's something going on with jupiter i think the the moon and the sun are pretty um opposite each other today so it, everything is just very um it's as though everything is very clear everything is very clear which is maybe why i'm being asked to bring this through this message today um Let's see if there's anything else that wants to come through. I'm not going to make this a very long video, but uh, let's just see if there's anything else. Uh, let's go back to the crystal, shall we? Okay, let's go back to the crystal. It was interesting the way this came into my possession as well, because I actually bought it from a, a shop on Etsy. And... Um, I buy lots of things on Etsy because I think I like the fact that they're, you know, cottage industries and, you know, um, people who are into crafts and all the rest of it. And I had I bought a few other things at the same time. And if you buy on Etsy, you probably understand what I'm about to say, which is you put different things into a basket, but it becomes like a collective basket. And I just pressed pay not realising this was even in my basket. I obviously had put it in, but I hadn't actually made that decision. I was definitely going to buy it. And then I, and I saw it. And I was like, oh, I've paid for it. Oh, OK, it's coming. And it arrived, yes, as I say, it arrived yesterday just before the full moon. So I'm getting to know its energy. But let's just see if it's got anything else to say to us today as a collective. So let's just tune into this for one moment. Okay, I'm hearing, so back to the ladder of light, light and back to a ladder implying steps towards ascension or evolution. I'm hearing you've got to know why you're climbing the ladder in the first place. That's what you're being asked. Why are you climbing the ladder in the first place? It's actually a really good question. Um, some people are unconsciously trying to climb the ladder. And I'm being shown it's almost now got like butter or oil over it. And what's happening is that the higher rungs, you can't get to the higher rungs unless you are fully conscious of what you're actually trying to achieve. Um, what I mean by that is it's the stripping away of the ego. It's not about getting to the top quicker than somebody else. It's not about getting the badge or the reward or the honour or being able to say, I'm standing here and, oh dear, you're still down there, are you? <laughs> you know, that's all just complete ego. Um, actually, if that was the case, you should be putting your hand down to help the person up. Um, and that is about recognising other people's wounding. Um, I, I won't say where I saw it, but it was on one of my social media channels over the last week or so. I saw an interaction um, from two people that were obviously wounded in different ways. And the comment was, the comment that came was quite on the surface judgmental and, um, well, probably quite hurtful for the other person to hear who was also wounded. But when I tuned into it, I could see they were both wounded. So it's like two wounded people not being able to, so it's like there needs then to be that third energy that comes in to just try to bring in the healing for both of them. Um, why did I go off on that tangent? I'm not quite sure. Let me just tune back in. 
uh, because there are plenty of wounded people in the world who are, it's, okay, Metatron saying, go back to that passage he gave me earlier, um, to do with a lot of people are, a lot of people with unprocessed shadows um, are just listening to what the crowd are saying. Um, it's almost like it's what I want to hear. It's not what I need to hear. There's a difference between it's what I want to hear versus what I need to hear. Those who are brave enough to actually s say what we need to hear, as opposed to what is just popular and what will get views, for example, or will draw a crowd, or will make you liked, or will make you part of the popular gang. You know, um, that's not necessarily where the truth is. Interestingly, I pulled this card again today. If you're with me on Instagram, I've been doing daily videos on Instagram this week just to bring extra support in. And this card came up yesterday and it's to do with um, be courageous. Truth conquers all. It's all about the truth. Truth sometimes is difficult to um, deliver. It's also difficult to hear. And... But this, this ladder of light is linked into having the right energy to be able to keep on climbing up it. You have to be doing it for the right reason. It's not from a place of ego or getting one over on somebody else or trying to score a point or, and, you know, sometimes you think, well, of course it's not. It's the ladder of evolution. But yet, are we walking the talk? Are we truly walking the talk as much as we can day in, day out? So, okay, let's just see if there's anything else. I want to put this with a spray. Um, I'll put it with the Sanat Kamara spray, which um, <laughs> I haven't actually dared to show on YouTube yet because I think we sold all of them on pretty much day one. This came out last week, Sanat Kamara spray. And um, I'll do a separate video on Sanat Kamara, but let's just use the spray because um, Sanat Kamara, again, I feel is a being that's coming in to try and bring unity to, into the ranks. He's associated with many different world religions um, or referenced in many world religions, respected across the board um, and also in New Age circles, um, New Consciousness circles, I think I'd prefer to call it. Um, so... Yeah, and uh, one of the things that he's also linked into is Lemuria, so it goes quite well with this crystal. Let's just see. Love and light activation. Today's energy. Or whenever people are watching this, please, what message is that? He's showing me the hugest, biggest flame I've ever seen in my life. And he's also showing me the embers. Um, and that both are important to make the fire. I think it's that energy of unity again. It's recognising that everybody is playing their part. Everybody is where they're meant to be. But the higher you climb the greater the responsibility you have, the greater expectation that is actually upon you to walk the talk, to truly do it. But equally to have compassion for those that can't. It's funny actually, I mean I'm totally flawed like all of us <laughs> and I've got plenty to work on in this lifetime but uh, it did come to me today over breakfast and it's obviously linked into what he's just said here that years ago I had somebody that was a, a good client of mine she came to my house going back years followed me for a long time and then the last ever interaction I had with this person they asked my opinion on something a family problem that they were having and I gave it and um I was doing it from a place of a higher perspective, but equally trying to honour the place of pain that she was in. And um, she said to me something along the lines of, "We ca well, we can't all we can't all respond like you will. You will, you know. Um, we can't all do that." 
And that was the last I ever heard of her. Uh, literally, that was the last contact. And I was like, whoa, I wasn't, I wasn't saying that I was better than you. <laughs> but she obviously was triggered by something that had been said, which was like, no, that's, that rung is too high. That rung is too high. And even though I'm not there, I don't even want to aspire to get there because it's too big a gap. What your ancestors, your guides, your angels will do is help you bridge the gap. They'll help you bridge the gap between the rung that you're on and the next rung. And yes, sometimes it can be a big ask. It's like, really? You really want me to be able to hold that vibration? That is difficult. I'm a human being. Yes, but if you want to keep on climbing and truly this word ascension and enlightenment is banded around a lot of the time. But to truly be it and to align to it is something else. And there's high expectations here. But the high expectations are ones that you have also placed there, your higher self. You know, there's nothing wrong with having something to aspire to. I think sometimes we, we, we think it needs to be too easy. So I do think with this, you know, this Leo full moon is just bringing a lot up. Let me just pull um, one more card from my own deck. And one more card from Art Through the Eyes of the Soul Oracle I've been using all week. Let me also just have some water. Hold on. I was about to say beautiful day, but actually it's a bit grey. <laughs> the birds are singing though. It's not raining, that's good. Okay, what goes with the... So let's have a look at this ancestor card again. goes with the card of ancestors other than what I've already said okay that one's just fallen out oh god that's fallen out as well okay what have we got interesting yeah I hadn't mentioned that conquering fear upside down with ancestors we've also got the card of letting go um this conquering fear upside down with ancestors uh this is linked into breaking the chain in family in a family line maybe you're somebody maybe there's addiction has passed down the family line so there are still you know there's an addiction thing maybe there's codependency maybe you have a pattern where all the women um, in your family um, have problems with birth or you know uh, you're widowed early or you're left or maybe the men in the family have um, issues with, I don't know, gambling or um, I don't know, what, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is. All families have patterns. All families have things that get passed down until somebody in the family line puts their hand up and says, actually, I'm going to I'm going to try and take that on and I'm going to try and clear this whole line. So I'm holding, for example, the addiction that my father had, my grandfather had, my great grandfather had. It might have taken different um, forms, you know, in one lifetime it could have been alcoholism, in another lifetime it might have been gambling, in another lifetime it might have been something else. But ultimately it's addiction, for example. I'm going to be the one that puts my hand up and says, okay, I'm going to break that. I'm breaking it not just for myself and them, I'm breaking it for the ones to come. I'm breaking it for the ones to come because if I don't break it, it's going to it's just going to keep carrying on. Do I want my children to then have to deal with this and be the one that is asked to put your hand up and try for the line which has just got bigger because you're also in it as well. Having said all of that, sounds great as a theory, doesn't it? But actually, there's you have to conquer fear to be able to break the family pattern. Um, because those family patterns are very well established um, and can be deeply rooted within the DNA. But yet we also know that we're being blessed with this huge influx of light, um, um, increasingly high vibration of Mother Earth, which is helping us all to ascend. So we never have had a better chance to be able to do it than now, um, which is why we've also got letting go time for release. It's time to release these ancestral patterns. But what we have to do is we have to conquer our fear. And, you know, this card here is all about the fact that you, again, it's the message you don't, you're not doing it alone. The angel is with this person. 
the angel is holding this person as she takes the first step, the first step where she's feeling timid, frightened, I can't do it, shadow energy has come in, lowered the vibration and the angel is saying, yes, she can. And I'm helping you because you have put your hand up and said, I want to be the one to break the pattern. I want to be the one to heal myself, my past and also my future. And the thing is, when you do that, you also have, the, this isn't a weight of uh, need on your back. It's not like the ten of um, the ten of wands, which is just like, oh my god, it's so heavy. You know, all of these ancestors that were carrying this wound, and I'm the one that has to heal it. No, that's victim energy. This is more to do with holding the energy of the warrior, the spiritual warrior, that says, absolutely, I came in for this moment to absolutely do this, and I can, and I will. I can, and I will, and I have a whole battalion behind me as well. And these ancestors are also willing me on. Um, it, it's, yeah, I, want, I haven't got it to hand, but I'm being shown the Ten of Wands in the tarot in my mind because in that deck, um, it shows a horse that's being pushed uphill. Um, you know, and it's like the ancestors, the one pushing, pushing you up the hill, urging you on, wanting it for you. Uh, not just for them, for you and for the future generations to come. So it's to do with conquering that fear and it's to do with starting today, starting today. Um, I'm just looking for... Uh, I got, yeah. Fear Fighter. Fear fighter. Children's spray. The thing is, you see, a lot of these reasons why we can't and we don't, it actually stems from childhood. <laughs> it stems from a childhood wound or it's our inner child that gets frightened. So, yeah, these children's sprays are used by lots of grown-ups because um, it's, where, it's where the fear is seeded. And so, therefore, the help is here. Let's just spray fear fighter and let's see what we get. Linked into ancestors. I'm being shown the infinity sign, number eight. Uh, number eight, the infinity sign. And it's like in the top segment of the number eight is the ancestors. In the bottom loop of the number eight is the future generations. And you are right in the center of that infinity sign. You're at the crossroads. And it's like, what are you gonna do to try and unite and heal the past and the future? And you might run away from that and think, oh God, I don't want to do that. Why me? I just want to get on with my life. But the thing is, you contain the past, the present and the future within you. You are the past, the present and the future. You are multidimensional. You are your ancestors. You are your future family. You are you. You're all of it. Okay, so it's like also drawing, I'm also hearing drawing strength from both sides of the number eight, both sides of infinity. I'm being, I'm feeling now, I don't know whether you can feel it, I'm feeling the strength of the ones to come. Whoa, I mean, they are forceful beings. The ones to come in your family line. Okay, if you haven't had children yourself and your children haven't had children, think about maybe, I don't know, you know, other members of your family, cousins, whatever. There's always usually a continuation of the family line. My, my brother in this lifetime has chosen not to have children, but I've had children, so my family line via my father comes through me and my girls and whatever happens to them in the future. There's always somewhere, you know, even if it kinks a little bit and it's like, well, that person didn't, but this person did. There's usually an onward flow. So that's going to apply to most of you. Just tune in for one moment to the future generations to come in your family line and feel their strength and feel their power.
I just want to, I just want to smile. I just want to smile. Mine have been a bit, you know, they're running wild. <laughs> they're running wild, which for me is a message. It's like, thank God, broken the shackles of the, you know, of not being free, not feeling, you know, can do things, being constrained. You know, all these generations feeling constrained, not being able to take certain paths, not being able to do certain things because of all sorts of reasons. I'm seeing future generations, certainly linked into me, it's just like, whoa, you know, having a great time running here, there and everywhere. Freedom, wildness, but wildness in a good way, free spiritedness. You know, I've got a smile on my face, but it's because I'm, I'm shown that, you know, it's that glorious golden colour. It's the colour of honey. Um, so... Did I say this week on Instagram? I think I did. The future's too. The future's too bright. I need to wear shades. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. <laughs> that feels a good place to end on for uh, this particular energy as well. So go well, my friends. Go well, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will be back soon. Much love to everybody. Bye bye for now. Bye.